Welcome back. I hope you are ready to embark on the second stage of your adventure. Be warned, these next two stages will be the most perilous part of your journey, but they are vital if you truly seek to know the secrets of Bayesian Structural Time Series. But before we begin to unravel the mysteries of Bayesian Structural Time Series, we must first understand Structural Time Series. On this next stage of the adventure, we will discuss structural time series models. We do not enter the Bayesian context just yet. Here, we consider structural models from the classical or frequentist perspective. Why, you ask? Because structural time series models are the foundation upon which Bayesian structural time series models are built, as hopefully you guessed from the titles. In this video, we discuss several structural time series models, including the local level model, the local linear trend model, models with seasonality, and models with regression components. We will start with the simplest model, then build upon this framework until we work our way up to the general form of a structural time series model. You may have also heard the term state space model. This is just another name for structure models that is a consequence of its roots in the engineering field. In structural time series modeling, we consider our data to come from some unobserved process called the state space. The data we observe is generated by this state space, but with added noise. We attempt to model the unobserved state space instead of directly modeling the data. The simplest of these models is called the local level model. Here, we use yt to denote the data and mu t to denote the unobserved state. The model looks like this. Mu t is the level of the series at time t. One way to think of this is in comparison to linear regression. Mu t is sort of like the intercept in our regression model, but in our local level model, mu t is permitted to vary through time. At any time point, the level mu is the same as the previous time, plus a noise term, xi t. What we actually observe is yt, which is the level at time t, plus some more noise. The parameters in this model are the variances of the error terms, sigma squared epsilon and sigma squared xi. Given an initial value for mu t, say mu sub zero, the values of mu t and yt depend on the variances of the error terms. A time series following this model might look something like this. The local level model is the simplest structural time series model. As we will see shortly, more complex models are basically just extensions of the local level model. Because of this, it is important to make sure you understand the local level model before moving on to more complicated models. The simplest way to extend the local level model is to include a trend component along with the level component. This is called the local linear trend model. Here, we consider yt and mu t to be the same as in the local level model. We add an additional term, nu t, that acts like a slope term. The model looks like this. Note here that mu depends on the previous value of the slope along with the previous value of mu. And since we have an additional state component, nu t, we have an additional noise term, zeta t. Again, the parameters here are the variances of the three error terms. The local linear trend model might look something like this. The next thing we might want to add is a seasonal component. Here, we consider mu t to be the local linear trend model we just discussed. Tau t is the seasonal component. We model tau t using dummy variables for each season. The model looks like this. Since we consider mu t to be a local linear trend model, there are actually four parameters here. One for the measurable noise that goes with yt, one for the level, one for the trend, and one for the seasonal component, tau t. If we consider mu t to be the local level model, then we would have just three parameters because there would be no trend term. Basically, we have a noise term and corresponding variance for each of our state components. 
the model might look something like this. This is the sea surface temperature around Gibraltar. We will see this data again in our implementation videos using R. We might also want to include a regression component in our model. Here, we consider mu t to be a local linear trend as before, and tau t is our seasonal component. The regression component is beta transpose x. The model looks like this. We write in this way for simplicity. Since mu t is a linear trend model, there are two more equations associated with it that we saw earlier. Likewise for tau t. If we wrote out all the equations though, it would look a bit daunting. Just remember that there is not just one equation associated with this model. Note that we have allowed for beta to vary in time. This is not necessary because we could consider beta fixed and add it to the equation for yt. If we do this, then the regression part is not part of the state component as we have written it in this particular model. So far, we have discussed several structural time series models. Hopefully by now, you have an idea of what they are and how we can use them to capture a variety of situations. Before we move on to the Bayesian aspects of structural time series though, we would like to present the general form of a structural time series model. Generally, a structural time series has two equations. They are called the observation equation and the transition equation. In the local level model, these would be the equations for yt and mu t respectively. Here, yt is the data, just like the previous models. But now we use alpha t to denote the state variable. Alpha t can include a level, trend, seasonal, or regression component. We can include or exclude these components as we see fit. For example, if we want a local level model, then alpha t is the same as what we called mu t in the local level model equations. The general form of a state space model looks like this. This might look a bit more complex than some of the previous models, but writing the model like this with matrices saves us from writing an equation for the level and the trend and the seasonal component and any other components you might want to add, which could be a lot of equations depending on how complex the model is. Just like in the previous models, the parameters here are ht and qt, which are the variances of the error terms epsilon t and eta t. Now that we have a handle on structural time series models, we are ready to see how the Bayesian framework can be incorporated. You may be weary from this part of the journey, but fret not, my traveler. There is only one more formidable stage before you enter the last part of your adventure and learn to harness the power of Bayesian structural time series for your future endeavors.